Welcome to our monthly update in Strasbourg. Now, the breaking news from Strasbourg is that the EU has broke its own law. It's broke international law and it's broke EU law with the EU-Turkey deal. But of course, that's not how you are hearing it. And the fact that it has violated human rights and that refugees are coming from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, war-torn countries and yet as we Sinn Féin MEPs have been saying for weeks and months they want to keep them out and not keep them safe and that is exactly what that deal is about. The other big uh, story that has been discussed here at great length and at home is Brexit. Sinn Féin is very clear we want an Ireland of equals and a Europe of equals and that's the kind of Europe that we are promoting human rights social rights, environmental justice and therefore it is very essential that you have progressive MEPs like ourselves in the European Parliament fighting our corner but also ensuring that we protect and maintain the social pillar of Europe. Thirdly, last week I launched the human rights, the legal advice that we commissioned um, as Sinn Féin MEPs in the group that we are a member of and it was very, very clear that the British government are looking to scrap the European Convention of Human Rights and they are saying that only those cases which are serious and not those trivial cases should go to the European Court of Human Rights. So watch trivial. Um, let's look at, for instance, carers, the disabled, journalists, those families have gone to the European Court of Human Rights because a family member has been neglected in hospital. Those family members have gone to the European Court of Human Rights because a family member has been neglected in um, a mental health institution. Those are the kind of cases that they regard as trivial. Lots, lots more to discuss. Time doesn't let me. So I'm going to hand you over to Lynn with her breaking news. Thanks, Martina. Um, yep, I suppose we've just had, I, I suppose, two weeks now since the election of lots of uh, propaganda on behalf of Irish Water and how Ireland would be subject to EU fines if they uh, if they went ahead and abolished Irish Water, despite the fact that the electorate have given a very clear mandate to the incoming government that they want water charges abolished. Well, we've just had confirmation that, in fact, this is absolute nonsense, that the uh, river base and management plan which would I suppose drop the derogation has not even been sent to the Commission yet and it's not due to be adopted until the 22nd of March so we're calling on all of those TDs who stood on a platform to abolish water charges which includes Fianna Fáil uh, now need to step up to the plate in regards to this and to end the nonsense that we've had on the media particularly from the Irish Independent newspaper group who've been out uh, championing the cause of Irish water. Um, and on that note, I suppose, again, referring to the independent news and media, a breaking story from uh, the European Commission as well around the media ownership in Ireland. Last June, we put forward a question to the Commission uh, expressing our concerns about the ownership in, of the media in Ireland with Dennis O'Brien owning 60% of media content. Um, we were told that a report was being carried out to look into the situation and it was due to be released in December. Uh, some of the details of that report have been leaked. We're still awaiting the full report to come out, but it has, I suppose, shown what we always expected, which is that Ireland is at a very high risk in terms of the plurality of the media content that's out there. Um, so we'll be following up on this as soon as we get the full details of that report. So I'm now going to hand you over to uh, Matt Carthy. Thank you, Lynn. So this week, as we sit in Strasbourg, we're very conscious of the fact that... Uh, unprecedented 23 Sinn Féin TDs are taking their seats in Leinster House and we want to congratulate all of those returned TDs. Um, it was my honour to serve as Director of Elections um, over the course of the campaign and I want to say that in 50, um, 50 across 40 constituencies rather, 50 candidates played an absolute blinder and made us very proud and Republicans all over the place very proud and we've been inundated with messages of goodwill and congratulations from MEPs right across the spectrum obviously most notably from those on the left who would share in our absolute success and who would congratulate us and who would on many occasions refer to the absolute onslaught that Sinn Féin were subjected to by elements of the media during the recent campaign. Our job is very 
clear as MEPs is to work with our um, TDs in the weeks and months ahead to ensure that the Sinn Féin message is delivered. And we've been doing that this week through a number of files. Um, I've as you know, serve on the Agriculture and Rural Development Committee and the Economic um, and Monetary Affairs Committee here in the Parliament. And we're dealing with a number of very particular um, issues, some of which can be very technical, but are all very Im important. And we're obviously continuing our work on TTIP um, as well. And we're going to be running a very big campaign over the next number of weeks also. So that's work that's going to continue, but we're very eager to engage with those new TDs who will be given new portfolios and who will continue to join with us in being that progressive Republican voice that the Irish people so desperately need in our opinion. And now I will pass you on to Liam Ureda. August to be their fad, more fishery or poker five hour league. So we on a sport, as we on a spreak, August is really a sled of Mahavian or have a Kiko Tok, the song going, Lebet and on the side in Sasa Parliament. I would also like to welcome the fact that in January we had an announcement that there will be four million set aside specifically for translation um, and translation services of Skelgen saw. So I would be hoping that whatever government comes into play now will immediately start the process of recruiting people for training for those language services. On the fisheries issues, because I haven't been with you for a long time uh, due to election uh, campaigning Savada, a lot has happened, too much to go into here really. We've had the results of the penalty point study out, which really shows and shines a light, I suppose, on some of the hamstrings that are on the, the SFPA in terms of how and what information they get from other flag states in relation to penalty points there. They're basically not given the information that they should in terms of quota, um, and so they are kind of tied up. And the other big issue, of course, in fisheries is the super trawlers, and it's a continuing issue. Recently, this week, in fact, 28 do dolphins were found dead off the west coast of Ireland. And there is a strong suspicion that this is linked indeed to the big nets of the super trawlers. So we are continually calling for a ban on those massive trawlers that are just hoovering up the fish. Lots more happening in, in the fisheries committee, but like I said, not enough time. And just very quickly on the budget, because again, we're discussing budget 2017 and we are going to see the effects of this in Ireland at the moment. There's a delay from member states paying in what is owed to the EU budget. They should have paid in by the 1st of December. They didn't. Um, and that, as a result, then has led to delays in payments, for instance, for leader programmes and other programmes that, are, that need EU funding. So the Commission is constantly fobbing off the fact that, you know, they just don't have the money at the moment. And we're already, as I said, in a deficit situation and trying to have money for 2017 is not looking great. So there's lots happening in budget as well. But again, far too much to go into here. But look. We are fighting away here and standing up for the Irish people and trying to ensure that we get what is rightly ours. So from the four of us, if you haven't done so already, join the Rising. See you in April. Slang of oil.